G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Water Assassin Fishing. Dave here today and as you can hear from the thundering noise of water clapping over rocks behind me, I'm back in Orange, family property. Very fortunate to live out of town. Um, beautiful place, Orange. For those who don't know, Orange is situated about three to three and a half hours west of Sydney. Um, it's about five hours to six hours from where I currently live at the moment in Jervis Bay. And yeah, basically it's, um, the, well, the location of the first gold in Australia was found in Ofa, just outside of it. And it's one of those places that if you visit, you're gonna love. Um, a lot of people from Sydney are moving out here now. Um, also, I guess it's probably one of the colder climate areas in Australia. I think it's like the second highest city in Australia. Um, and for that reason, it gets really cold here. But anyway, enough about that, guys. Let's get into some fishing. Phew! Oh. Try and cover some ground early on if I can before the sun comes up and the snakes come out. Very snaky area around here. The red belly blacks. Not that big of a worry, those ones, but it's the big browns that are the concern. So we've got some nice pooling going on over here. You can see the oxygenated water running through the rapids into these deeper pools. I'm going to keep moving. Oh, a bit of a rock climbing. It's a beautiful spot out here though. A lot of the creeks around Orange are like this. Sort of very rural, pristine creeks that are often in my opinion, underutilized around the area. Okay, coming up on a nice little stretch here. Let's sneak up nice and quietly. They're casting over this part here. That little spinner spinning away. Water is there. It's great. Right up against that log on the other side. Oh, it's like snagged up. It's not good. I've only got one of these, one of these um, lures today. So I will be swimming if snags get a bit hard to get out. As this one is, there we go. So I sort of scared away anything like it living near. Now this is a perfect spot for a trout. Again, talking about oxygenated water, you guys can see the rapids up here. Water flows down, the trout will sit here at the bottom of these rapids and I'll face upstream and wait for, you know, the insects and things to get washed down through those rapids. So I'm gonna target this little space for a little bit. Probably a bit hard that cast. Over on the other side, you can see where the water's being pushed around too into that eddy. It's a really good spot for trout there too. It's a little bit easier for the trout to sit in a bit like that than it is into that washing machine at the front. So oftentimes it'll sit there in that little space that you guys can see it. Wait for something to get washed around the corner. So early morning, this is where you'll get your snakes laying on the pads and then longer grass. Later on, I'll come out when that sun does and they'll bake on the rocks. So you've got to be careful when you're going through that longer stuff. You don't tread on a snake. Oh no, here's a deeper pool just here. So that's a really good spot. You can see over the other side over there, that rock face, no doubt it'll be deeper over on that section there. You've got fast moving water. I can hear it. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Up into that little gully. This whole pool here that we can work. Probably going to need a potentially bigger lure, um, but you can see you've got that mosquito larvae sort of flying around on the top. Just hatched. Let's give this spot a few goes. Okay, guys, rounded the bend, and in front of me over here, you can see this stretch of water just above this rapid section. I don't have really the gear to be able to put down into this, but this would be a prime spot for, for a trout with a fly. And I'm going to essentially 
come down as close as I can to the water here. And I'm going to target this little upper region section before we get to the rapids. Because at the top of that, I reckon there's a, there's a trout. Files a trout, that's where I'd be. Pass it up into there. And slowly bring it back down. And we're snagged up already. So I'm just going to go above that lure. Again, I'm not risking losing this. I've only got two pound leader. So I can't really just try and like manhandle it off. I'm going to have to use these rocks here to try and get myself into a better position to get this lure off. Ah, oh, there it is, just there. Isn't that the worst thing when you can actually see the lure? Oh, it's caught on a piece of... It's caught on a piece of wood. Do have waterproof boots, but the water's too deep. Um, but I'll go over the top of the ankle, so... I'm going to take the boots off. Huh. That was not coming out of here. I'm gonna need that lure. When I get One thing that'll get you in these um, trout streams is any pieces of wood that have been in the water because the hooks all jam themselves in the, in the wood, whereas these rocks are so slippery that anything that goes over rocks will just continue to go over it. Where these creeks are awesome, They're really fun to fish. But if you have a look on either side of me, just there, and pretty tell just there, got steep high cliffs either side. I know what you're thinking, why is that a big deal? Well, the big issue is when you get rain through here, you get flash floods, and that's how people die. These remote areas, you get caught in a flash flood here, and you can see the water's all up here. Obviously, it has rain, but, you know, in a flash flood, this water, I'd be, I'd be about two body lengths of water above me in, you know, one foul swoop, so... Really important guys to make sure if it's raining that you have a plan B ready to go at all times to get out of that situation. You gotta get up a hill as quick as you can. Okay, now we're nearing, looks to be a really nice little spot here. The old man's gonna come down here in a second as well. Have a bit of a, a bit of a look. This creek runs along the edge. Oh, you'd nearly say through, through the property back home. So, this is a great, great looking prospect of a spot. And I'll probably come down here a little bit later. But I will get a few casts in if I can. Just going to target this little section just here. And then I'll move up and hit that bigger billabong up there. Yeah. Second snag. Wow. Okay, boots off. Uh, boots are off. Let's try and get this bike back. It's going to be a very slippery rock, that big one just there. Just going to have to sit down and <laughs> scooch my way in. Yeah, okay, that's a bit fresh. These rocks are like walking on ice. They're so slippery. You can see this lure here has grabbed literally the only piece of organic matter in probably this whole billabong. Back on. Oh, here's a good pull here. This is a nice little billabong. A bit of a little creek science here for you guys. So, spoke a little bit about it earlier. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that in the edit though, so I'll put it in now. But that water coming over the top just there that's a, that's a little waterfall full of oxygenated water as the water goes over that little spillway or waterfall, whatever you want to call it. It oxygenates that water and that's what the fish love. But they also love the you know, the, the bait, not the bait, you probably call it more their prey that comes down over that waterfall, talking like insects and little baby fish and all that sort of thing. So the fish will sit in this little pocket here, just outside of that fast moving water, um, potentially even right at our feet. And they'll sit there and, and ambush um, whatever comes over that. So everything's facing pretty much back up there. There are occasions where 
you know, over in that corner where they might be fish like sort of downhill, that's because the water will do like a big whirlpool kind of effect. But yeah, basically this whole thing here will be very fishy. Oh, I'll come back and fish this little spot a little bit later. Again, I'm still trying to make my way up, up the river or up the creek. But you can see on the other side over there, on top of that um, tree that's fallen down, hey, you've got all the sticks and, and debris on top of that. And that shows where that water goes to. On some of these flash floods, when they come through, this creek, these creeks really swell. And, you know, I'd be under about three meters of water right now when that happens. So again, just gotta be so careful when it's raining or it has been raining through these spots. Um, cause it, you know, it'll get to that point, you know, within minutes, it's that quick. So yeah, and if you're on the other side over there, scrambling up the bank can sometimes be a bit difficult. Up here, I've got sort of a bit of an easier run up there, but yeah, just gotta watch that stuff. Beautiful little rainbow. <laughs> Took the lure out of that spot over there. Lure changed to a spinner from the little Rapala. Oh yeah. Landscape video. Here we go. That's a good little rainbow trout. Oh, beautiful fish. Only got two pound leader, guys, no net. That's a big trout. That's a big rainbow trout. Wow. <laughs> oh, yes. Beautiful little rainbow trout. Fought on a little spinner in the creek behind me. How nice is that? Great fish. So it's a rainbow trout by the red coloration through the middle of the middle of the fish. Brown trout have little brown spots all over them. This is the first kind of fish that I ever caught. Round orange. Great fish. Creek swollen a little bit. Let's go down this way. Sort of branched off into two parts. One here and then one on the other side where those sort of rocks are on the other side up there. I'm gonna try and make my way up over these rocks, try and find somewhere up a little bit river where there might be a billabong. Whoa. Woo! where you do ankles and knees and ACLs and that kind of fun stuff on these slippery rocks. Oh. Okay. If I had a fly rod, I'd try and get it in here. See any fish in there, guys? Can't. See all these little rock pools and stuff. It is a beautiful place. People don't, again, people don't realize it. It's sort of like around, you know, the snowy mountain area. You know, you get a lot of these creeks and, and streams leading into the Yukonbeen and Jindabyne rivers and Threadbow rivers, but you have some of these country areas that are sort of subalpine and these creeks are around. Beautiful place. So there's another section of the creek over here and I'm just going to continue to make my way up and hopefully they merge and we get some of those bigger billabongs again. Trout feel vibrations in the, in the ground. And they can hear you too, apparently. So I'm gonna sneak up here.
keep meandering our way across slippery rocks. Trying to stay high, higher than the water. With these trout facing upstream, they can see me if I'm too close. So I just want to walk up or run up nice and high. As mentioned before, whoa, nearly went down. The deadliest snakes in Australia live here with the Eastern Brown and the King Brown. Both very prevalent in the area. They'd be sitting up under little cracks like that. Sitting there. I'll come out when the sun comes out and I'll sun themselves on these rocks here. Red belly black snake also lives here. Not as aggressive, still equally as as um scary though when it runs around you. Whoa, that's a two meter drop. Be careful where I'm putting my hands to. Oh. Sunny trout. Love running water. And just put themselves into spots that you just wouldn't even realise. Lua's stuck again. This time we're a bit deeper here, guys, and it's, it's like it's caught on the other side of a rock, so a bit unlucky with this one. Slice me foot open. Back. Ah, yowch, just like that. Okay, what damage have I done? Oh, that hurt. <laughs> just like that. Now I broke my ankle. It's all already swelling up. As you guys can probably see. Show you on GoPro. Gonna have to do us a bit of first aid, I think. Ankles already swollen right up. Done a few ankles in my career, footy career. A lot of sprained ankles. <laughs> One thing I can say about sprained ankles is they hurt a lot more than people realize. They're very common as well. Lucky I've got a boot that covers that ankle and if I strap it tight enough, I should be able to continue fishing and get out of this area. I'm about oh, 3K from the car, so fair, fair hike back. And as you guys know from the way in, it's pretty, pretty ordinary terrain with no phone signal. So we'll see how we go. You guys can probably hear the roaring of a waterfall as we Continue to navigate the treachery of these rocks with a yeah, sore ankle. Feeling good actually, it doesn't hurt too much in the boot. Here. See a big waterfall just drop straight down over there. See if we can catch something just here. Hard to describe how far down that is. That's the end of my rod and it's nowhere near touching. So we're about two meters up here at the moment. Oh, that was good for the ankle. <laughs> Beautiful's that. I need to get down. It's not the best spot here when it's um, raining on flash flood. I might have a flick in this pool down the bottom here at this waterfall. Let's see how I go. Do you guys want to see the waterfall? 
Let's go. Hard to do justice how far down that is there guys. We're about five meters up. How nice is that? Hard place to grow up I can tell you. All that is really slippery there. You just slide all the way to the bottom. There's another pool just over here, a bigger one. As you can see up here, the edge of this cliff just plummets about 100 metres straight down. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys. Without falling in. Oh yeah, let me careful here, leap of faith. and cook with you guys now so we just caught that um you know nice size 32 centimeter uh rainbow trout there in the creek just below uh, my parents property and i'm gonna run you through what i take on these sort of adventures quickly first um obviously i've got this caribbean bag it's quite a large size bag um in the front here just got little little kit that has fire starters and just some little emergency gear that i sometimes use i have my little pack of lures um, obviously in the front here it's a little bit easier to get to than the main part so in this I just have an assortment of like surface lures and um, minnows and spinners great for trout snake bandage just easy to get to uh, also have which I'll be using and needing the old um, trusty bushcraft knife that I've had for years just put that back in there I needed to use it to dispatch that, that trout there before uh, also have just some emergency gear too uh, an energy gel for energy in case I'm stuck and I can't get somewhere. Um, got the magnesium um, hydrolyte, uh, fire lighter, penadol. Basic essentials there. So I always carry the in case I run out of water. Um, I do have a three litre water container in this bag as well, which I only filled up to about a litre because you don't want to be carrying all that, all that extra water. As you pull this up. So um, in the side of the bag, it's got side pockets. I've got Bush, Bushman's um, repellent. Great for those mozzies up in the creek there because they can be pretty bad around here. And the other side here, I think I've just got um, some blackfish floats and that sort of stuff. In the back container, so the main container, just in here. Top, I've just got lures and sorry not lures I've got some um, hooks and jig heads and that sort of stuff and then in this one underneath it I've just got all my fishing line different assortments going from two pound up to about 14 and then I've also got a container down the bottom here that has swivels and small sinkers and a few things that I sometimes need and wish I had but then have the trout which is wrapped up in this Uh, it's got a heap of different obviously fish on it, um, so you can sort of ID the fish. You know, I pretty much know what they are nowadays. These are my surface lures I use for bass, um, which we can use for the trout as well. Also got some spinners and Tassie devils in there too, which are great for trout. Um, I didn't need those today, so they were in there. I've also got some surface poppers that I use uh, mainly in the estuary. So just little ones again, just in case if the bike's slow and I need to change things up. Um, in here, I've just got the little mess kit. So the 
the surface of a little pro fuel container. It's a little butane container. Got some uh, oil and salt. And then I've just got this little stainless steel pot um, that I'll use the fish on. Uh, always keep a poncho on me just in case I need to sit down somewhere or if it rains or something just to keep the bag dry. And then I've just got today um, the jet boil system. So obviously the jet boil itself. Spoon as well. That's pretty much it for the bag, guys. Um, I carry a zinc and sunscreen in the top. Beautiful wife will be disappointed if I didn't have that. And I'm going to do a catch and cook for you guys now with this trout. I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm not going to um, do anything too crazy with it. Just a simple trout recipe. That really great table fish trout. Um, Especially being a non-native fish, I don't mind keeping these ones whenever I can. Mini the fox terrier. What are you doing, man? He's um, keeping an eye on me, making sure I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing down here. Got a nice hot pan now, guys, so I can throw in this beautiful rainbow trout. Let's hold the pan while I do that. Oh, yum. The other one in too. Tail in as well. Now I'm just going to push that down just to make sure it doesn't bubble up. Just for, for reference, guys, I left the scales on. Didn't skin this fish. Didn't fillet it. Find the um, skin to be really nice. Tastes really good, and the scales pretty much burn down to nothing. So not really massively important to fillet a trout. That bit over. Three hours west of Sydney. It's about roughly five hours from Jervis Bay where I live now. Um, yeah, basically grew up on, on property, been very lucky to do that. Um, like I probably mentioned before, grew up playing a lot of sport, so fishing wasn't always my main priority. However, yeah, we basically caught these when we were really young trout. Um, I think orange is classified as subalpine. You guys can sort of correct me if I'm wrong on that, but right here on the parents' farm, we're about 800 metres above sea level. Um, Mount Knobles, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it, it goes up nearly a thousand metres. Um, and also Mount Knobles, where orange is basically on the side of that extinct volcano. It's, it's actually the highest point on that whole, if you circumnavigate the world from, from where Mount Canobla sits, it's the highest point right around the world. So it's insanely high, I guess you'd, you'd say, for, for this part of um, Australia. And this is what happens. It's very cold in winter, exceptionally cold. In summer it does heat up, but not you know, nowhere near as hot as it gets in sort of Western Sydney or anything like that. It's still warm. Um, it does sometimes occasionally reach 40 degrees, but yeah, it's, it's, a, rare, it's a rare one. As you, you go further west, you get to more Dubbo, Narromine, you know, out past Burke, that's where it gets really warm. Um, but yeah, here it's, yeah, it's a beautiful sort of place to, to live. Um, and there is actually a lot of fishing around here. A lot of people that live around the area don't actually know that, but a lot of the creeks and, and streams and stuff you know, they're only about as wide as, um, you know, your car. They're full of trout and redfin and, and carp. Um, you know, and if you want to have a bit of fun with the kids, you go and target some carp with corn or even redfin, both noxious species, so get rid of them. Um, and there is also trout to be had as well, which I've shown you guys today. Fish with lures and flick around and half an hour later you something like this as well with the kids. So that meat is starting to turn sort of a wider shade now which is meaning it's getting closer to being cooked. I'm going to flip this over now. Hook the other side of this trout. Oh yeah we've got a nice char, a nice crispy char on the skin here. Come fishing next time, did you? Righto, our fish 
Fish is cooked. I'll take this off the fire. Close that off. Sit that aside for a bit. It's going to be raw and hot. I'll show you guys what we've got. So crispy skin trout. Um, obviously sea salted, uh, cooked in oil. Inside it, meat is beautifully cooked. It's like that. It's falling off the bone, as you guys can see, flaking away. But two of them. It's like that. And what I'm going to do first is I've got a chip at the tail of it. It's like a chip. It's going to be nice and crunchy. Let's try some of the tail first. Beautiful red meat. Don't have some bones. Don't have some bones in it, but that's alright. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. And you see the meat just sort of falls off the bone there. You can see here, here's got the tail. And what will happen is that tail will just pull out really easy. So it'll just, I can't show you guys here, but see that how that tail just basically comes right out. It's like that. And then you just left with bones essentially. And all that meat just there is good to eat. Now, you guys, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you who um, obviously watch these videos and, you know, just support me on the channel. Uh, it's funny, this time last year, I think I had just over 100 subscribers, like 101. And I don't do it for the subscribers, I do it because I actually just enjoy watching these videos later on. Seeing what I did and how I caught the fish and just reliving the adventure. But yeah, now I've got like, I know it's not a lot compared to a lot of the channels you guys probably watch, but... They've got 380 subscribers, um, and that's just insane. So, 380 of you guys, you know, feel the need to subscribe to this channel. Um, I do apologise about some of the videos, but I do hope you get something out of them. Um, as always, thank you for supporting me, and I'll see you on the next adventure.